Hey Joe fans, I'm John Setzler. Welcome back to the Kamado Joe Cooking Channel. Today we are going to put together a loaf of artisan bread that's going to knock your socks off and we are going to cook it in the Kamado Joe Classic in a Dutch oven. And today I'm going to be working uh, on a theme that I've learned from this book that I've recently picked up. This is called Josie Baker Bread. And I'm going to give you a link to this book in the video description if you want to check this out. Uh, but the recipe idea and technique comes from this book, but we're going to adapt it to cooking in our Kamado. So let's get started. Okay folks, the first thing we're going to do is make what's called a pre-ferment. And what I've done is I've got just a soup crock here on my scale because I want to measure these out uh, fairly accurately. We're going to start out with 120 grams of room temperature water, or right at it there. And if you can't measure this on a scale, that's going to be roughly... Uh, one half cup. It should be pretty close to one half cup. And then what we're going to do is put in a quarter of a teaspoon of instant yeast. This is not the rapid rise kind. It's just the regular store package variety dried active yeast. So we're going to put that in and then we're going to add 105 grams of whole wheat flour. And so I'm going to zero my scale back out and 105 grams should work out to approximately three quarters of a cup if you have to measure it with a measuring cup. So I've already pre-weighed this, so it should be right at it. So that's 106. So right there is where we want to be. So I'm just going to take it off the scale. I'm going to take a clean spoon and we're going to mix this up and incorporate that until there's no dry flour left. And once you get that completely mixed up, that's what it should look like. It's going to have a fairly thick consistency. So just get it all in there. And then take a piece of plastic wrap and cover the top of it. And just let this sit on your countertop at room temperature for 12 hours. At least 12 hours. If you want it to go a lot longer than 12 hours, once you get to the 12 hour mark, just take it put it in the refrigerator and you can keep it for another 24 hours or so if you need to, but 12 hours is our target here. So once we've had this out for 12 hours, I'll bring you back, show you what this is going to look like, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, our pre-ferment here has been going for 12 hours, so we're going to take the plastic off, and you can just kind of have a look at this. It, it's kind of flat across the top. It has risen up some, and you can see the bubbles there, and that's giving you a good indication that this is ready. So now we're going to bring this together with the rest of our ingredients. Okay, I've taken a small mixing bowl and I've put 375 grams of flour in that, which is approximately two and a half cups. And I'm going to add 12 grams of a fine grain sea salt, and 12 grams is approximately two teaspoons. And I'm just going to take my whisk and mix that together. And we're going to set that aside. I have transferred my pre-ferment into a plastic bucket here. You can use a, a larger mixing bowl for this if you like, but it needs to probably have at least a four quart capacity. So I've transferred my pre-ferment in there and I've got 240 grams of lukewarm water, which is approximately one cup. So I'm going to add that to our pre-ferment and I'm going to take my whisk. I've got a little dough whisk here and I'm going to mix that up. The object here is you just want to get most of the large chunks of the pre-ferment broken up. It doesn't have to be completely dissolved. So you just want to get it mixed up about like that. And then we're going to add our flour and salt. And we're going to combine that completely until all the dough or all the flour is absorbed into the water. And once that's combined, here's what you're going to be left with. You've got a fairly rough looking dough ball there. So what we have to do now is let this go through its bulk rise. So you want to cover your container. So I'm going to put a plastic lid on mine. If you're using a mixing bowl, you can just use plastic wrap. And we're going to let this sit on the countertop 
for somewhere between three and four hours. Uh, you don't want to go longer than four, but you want to go at least three. And this dough is going to flatten out in the container and it's going to double in size. So we're going to go three to four hours and then we'll be back for the next step. Okay guys, we've let this sit on the counter for four hours and it's, it's risen up a good bit here. So it's ready to go to the next stage. And the next stage in this process is we're gonna toss this in the refrigerator. And uh, since this is a no need dough, we're gonna retard it in the refrigerator for a minimum of three hours. And you can let this go in the refrigerator for a maximum of a week. And my recommendation on this, since we've got a pre-ferment already, is to let it go in the refrigerator at least 24 hours. So we're going to toss this in the fridge for 24 hours, and then we'll be back for the next step. Okay, we've had our bread dough in the refrigerator. I've had this in there for roughly 36 hours. So I've spread out my pastry mat here. You can do this on a countertop or on a big cutting board. I'm just going to lay a nice coat of flour down on there so our bread dough won't stick. And here's our dough coming out of the fridge. Uh, what I want to do is I want to use my dough scraper to uh, scrape this out. There's a lot of gas collected in this dough and I want to try to keep most of that in there so I don't really want to pull it apart. I'm just going to kind of scrape it. And we're going to turn it right out onto our floured surface like that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep flour on my hands. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the top of this dough and keep my hands floured. And we're going to spread this out kind of into a circle or a, or a rectangle, just like that. And then I'm going to fold one side over, fold another side over, and fold it over from each end like that. And I'm just going to flip it over. And I'm going to turn it in my hands just like that. And I'm kind of tucking under as I go. This dough is sticky. So I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit more flour on the top of that. And I'm going to keep turning just like this. Another thing you can do is you can put it down on your mat and just pull it towards you and turn it. Pull it towards you and pull it towards you again. What we're doing is creating a, a tight skin sort of on the top of this dough. And you can see our seam on the bottom. So what I want to do now, now that I've got that turned in, is I'm going to set that down on my mat and we're going to let that sit there for about 15 minutes. Okay, I've let our dough sit here for about 15 minutes. So what we're going to do now is go to the next step. Uh, I have a device here called a brat form. This is a wicker or rattan basket that bread makers favor for proofing bread dough like this. And this is a new one that hasn't been used yet and you can kind of see how that works. But I've got one here that's been seasoned and ready to go. This one I have put in a nice thick layer of a mixture, a 50-50 mixture of all-purpose flour and rice flour and what this will do is keep that bread loaf from sticking to this. If you do not have a brat form or don't want to get a brat form, you should use a similar size bowl which like I've got this stainless steel mixing bowl here so you would want to use something like this and you're going to want to line it with a uh, linen. Uh, I use these uh, flour sack or whatever they're called dish towels you double those over and lay it in there and you would also coat it with the same flour mixture to keep the bread from sticking and if you don't have a dish towel like that you can use like a dinner napkin uh, one of your heavy dinner napkins works just fine but the 50 50 mixture of all-purpose flour and rice flour is important you're going to want to coat that completely if you use that as well as if you use the brat form so what we're going to do next is I'm going to take that dough, I'm going to use my bench scraper to get that up around the edges, and I'm going to flip it over, and we're going to put it face down in that brat form, just like that. Now we're going to go through the proofing stage. So what I have to do next is we're going to let that rise, and I'm going to cover that with my dish towel, and we're going to let that sit for three to four hours, and then we'll be back. Okay, while our bread's proofing, 
I'm going to go ahead and fire up the Kamado Joe Classic. I've got one Kamado Joe fire starter down here in the middle of a full load of charcoal. So I'm going to light it up. We're going to let it burn with the lid open here for about 10 minutes. Okay, now that we've got our fire started, I've put my divide and conquer flexible cooking rack in here and I have set the accessory rack in the low position so we can put our heat deflectors on the accessory rack and have them elevated a little bit higher than, than having them in the low position. So I'm going to center those up and then I'm going to set the grill grates on top. And we're going to close the grill up and we're going to be targeting a temperature today of 475 degrees. So I'm going to show you how we're going to set up for that. To work up to 475 degrees, since that's pretty hot, we're going to leave the bottom vent fully open. And I'm going to close the slider on the top vent about three quarters of the way and leave the daisy wheel fully open. And I'm just going to watch the temperature and as we get up to around 400 degrees or so, I'm going to start adjusting it. If I need to warm it up more, I'm going to open the vent here. And if I need to choke it down, I'm going to close the slider and we'll make all of our adjustments from up top here until we settle in at 475 degrees. Okay. Also, as we're preheating our grill, we're going to preheat our Dutch oven with the grill. So I'm going to set the Dutch oven right here in the middle of the grill. I am using a four quart Dutch oven. Uh, you want a smaller Dutch oven for this. A five quart will work fine, but if you've got a four quart, it'll work even better. So set it in the middle, crack the lid a little bit where it can heat inside and out because we want it preheated to the same temperature as the grill, which we're shooting for 475. So we're just going to let that preheat until we come back. Our bread's finished proofing. It's been going for about four and a half hours here, and you can see how nicely that's risen. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to get it out of the brought form or out of your basket. So I've got a plate here that I've set a piece of parchment paper on top of. So actually we're just going to set the parchment paper on top of our brought form like this and then set the plate face down on top of that and then we're going to take the whole thing and just flip it over. And then we'll just lift the brought form off. And there we have our loaf. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this on out and we're going to put it on the grill. But before we do that, I'm going to take the lom and we're going to put a score right across the top, just like that. You can do that with a knife or a razor blade, but you want to kind of get it at a 45 degree angle and just go across the length of the loaf. So let's take this outside. Okay, so now that our grill's up to temp and our Dutch oven is preheated, we're going to lift the lid and we're going to take the lid off the Dutch oven and set it aside. And then we're going to use the parchment paper to lift this bread loaf and we're going to set it right down in the Dutch oven with the parchment paper, just like that. And then we're going to put the lid back on the Dutch oven close up the Kamado and let this cook for 20 minutes. We've been going for right at 20 minutes here at 475 degrees. So now we're at a point where we want to take the lid off the Dutch oven and set the lid aside and I'll set it on a heat proof surface. And we're going to get this uh, parchment paper out of here as well. And we're going to leave the lid off of this and cook it for another 20 minutes or so. Okay, Joe fans, we've been going for about 22 additional minutes here with the lid off, and I want you to have a look at this. That looks magnificent. So we're gonna take this off and I'll meet you back inside. Okay, our first order of business here is to get this out of the hot Dutch oven. So I'm gonna lift that out of there and we're gonna set it aside on a cooling rack. Okay, I've got this guy out. It's on the cooling rack and it's going to have to sit here for at least two hours. You want this to cool completely before we cut into it. So we're going to let it cool and then we'll be back. Okay guys, this loaf is cooled and I've taken the liberty of going ahead and cutting this in half. It's absolutely gorgeous. It smells even better. So we're going to take a slice out of this and have a taste test. Okay, I've sliced off a little piece of this. And you know I have a sweet spot for a little bit of honey. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of honey on the edge of that. 
and we're going to take a bite. Mm. Wow, that is amazing bread. It's really outstanding. That bread would make some phenomenal French toast, and I think I might just have some French toast in the morning. Guys, you're going to have to give this a try. Uh, there's a couple of, of things I wanted to pass along before we go on this. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can do this in your oven. You can do it on the Kamado Joe. Uh, one of the things that you can do, you can when you take that lid off at the 20-minute point, you can leave the parchment paper in there. You don't have to take that out. And in fact, if you leave it in there, it might make it a little easier to lift the bread out of the hot pan when you're done. So you could leave that in there. It doesn't really make any difference. So, wow. Give this a try. Let me know what you think. And join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Kamado Joe. Follow us on Twitter, at Kamado Joe. And until next time, this is John Setzler with Kamado Joe Cooking Channel.